and welcome to the Law of Positivism podcast. I'm your host, Shireen, and I'm the creator of Law of Positivism. I'm here to help you on your spiritual and healing journey. I am a certified yoga and meditation teacher, a student of Chinese medicine, a doula, a Reiki practitioner, and a passionate, highly sensitive person. I want to use my knowledge to channel information and messages for you to grow on all levels. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode. I'm so grateful that you're here and so grateful for everyone who have left reviews on iTunes. It really makes me happy to see that you're enjoying the episodes And thank you for everyone who's reposted the podcast episodes on Instagram. I always do a personal oracle card reading for those who repost the podcast or leave a review on iTunes. And I'm so excited about this week's guest. It's a dear sister and, yeah, long time ago, a dance teacher of mine, Nikki Awandi who's sharing her journey today from how dance also became her journey and path into the spiritual world. Uh, She is very passionate about female empowerment and has spent years shifting awareness and consciousness within the dance community. And her, together with her dance crew, Nefer Global Movement, has empowered females by building meaningful relationships through connection and collaboration and they have also created a beautiful show that is connected to the chakras of the body and Nikki has been all around the world dancing performing competing and she also has a beautiful documentary and we talk about dance and also healing with dance and also the spiritual aspects of dance and music. We talk about the chakras and also female empowerment. So I think this episode is really interesting and in the show notes you'll be able to find more about her and also connect with me through Instagram or Facebook. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi Nikki, welcome to the podcast. Yes, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so happy to have you here. <laughs> hey, what an honor and pleasure. Oh my God, it was a long time ago we saw each other, but now we're here and I'm very excited about this talk. And I always start by asking, how do you stay mindful and present? Oh, wow. Well, I think there is a few things. Um, music. Music always keeps me in the now, gets me to the moment. Whether I like it or don't like it, it it brings my attention to here and now. Mm. And uh, if there's something that I like, then I can really go deeper into the moment in a way that I usually just can't without it. You know. Mm. Yeah. And, and and secondly, it's it's uh, nature. Mm. You know? Being in nature or just watching trees, birds doing their thing. I love when they catch my attention because it's it's like time stops for a moment and I don't know, I just recenter and connect, you know. Mm, that's beautiful. Yes. I totally agree. And yeah, we met, I think it was over ten years ago, eleven <laughs> years ago, maybe twelve. And we met uh, in dance class. You were my teacher and mm. I loved your energy. You really mm. was someone that I remembered like mm. all the time in everything that I did with dance and mm. and uh, your kindness and, and uh, yeah, really beautiful. And I would love for you to share uh, for the listeners to talk a little bit about yourself and what your background and what you do. Mm. Well, first of all, thank you for that. That um, I really love. I really love what I do, 
and it's amazing when it when that energy gets gets transmitted to other people you know so uh, i i'm a dancer i do so many different things connected to dance one of the things i spend a lot of time with is, is teaching because i love sharing mm -hmm. i love the energy that happens in the room when you exchange with people and also i feel like it's really really beautiful to be part of someone's transformation someone's growth so um i teach a lot uh, in sweden where i live but also internationally for 10 years i think i've been traveling almost every week to different parts of the world just to teach share exchange learn grow Hmm. Um, and then I love improvisation. I love freestyle. Hmm. This is also the art of being in the now. And I believe my greatest teacher, to, um, to be honest, when it comes to uh, releasing, letting go, accepting the moment, not knowing everything, like not knowing what's about to happen, but still trusting and investing in the moment as if you would know. Hmm and uh, being a receptor, you know, being a receiver of what it is to come, what there is to be received in a, a moment like that, in a place like that. So then dance has been my, my language or is my language mm -hmm. to express myself, but also to connect with others, to read others, to understand others. How people move says a lot about the person, I believe. Hmm. Yeah. yeah that's amazing and dance is definitely um yeah i think dance can be because you 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 worked on on the spiritual part of dance as well and i think every type of expression and and creativity is channeling something right you're channeling something uh divine within you and um uh, you can move energy throughout your body, but you can also affect the energy of other people when you dance, right? You you yes. create emotions and and the frequencies that that is bouncing yes. uh, between you. So it's beautiful. And how if you if you talk about a little bit your your spiritual journey and how maybe it goes hand in hand with the dance and music, I would love to hear more about that. Well, I think I learned a lot about my spirituality through dance. Mm. It would be, um, I would have these moments of blackouts, you know, and I would mm. dance and everything would be amazing. And then boom, it's like I just go into a place where I don't really know what's going on, but I feel like I know what's going on. And after when I become more conscious, it's such a big, like big flow of energy that just comes through me. And it's, just, I just feel like almost in love, you know, I feel mm. almost high of life mm. and everything that I've just done is usually things that I've never done before or um, I probably won't do again, not in that way. And it always aligns in a way that affects me a lot and everyone else who are there to share the moment with me and it becomes a moment where everyone kind of understands what is happening without really knowing mm. and i would have these moments every now and then <clears throat> every now and again and would be you know it would be the the best part of my day or of my dancing time you know when that would happen and i started to ask why what is that and to go deeper within that. And they would become more intense and they would happen more often. I couldn't mm. really control them. I couldn't decide, okay, now let's go. Mm. You know, it was not like that. I just had to be open enough and get out of my own way somehow mm. for that to happen. And um, living in Sweden, which to me hasn't been a very like spiritual place I, people haven't really been open 
at least in my surrounding about spirituality there's been religion mm. or not you know mm. um these things were a little bit unheard of and when i try to ask people around me they were like what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> there would be some dancers who would who would know because they would experience too but mm. they wouldn't be able to articulate or maybe understand what's going on so for me i had to travel connect with other cultures where this is more common um read a lot to be able to understand what is going on and as i would understand things would grow the moments would grow and this blackout moment where i feel like my body is doing its own thing could happen on a regular you know i wasn't even dancing mm. type of moment and now i wasn't even blacking out anymore i was very aware but my body was doing things that i was not in in charge of if that makes sense mm. yeah it feels like it's a uh, like some type of a state of bliss uh, that that can and that's one thing that I've been thinking about the past couple of days because I see I mean uh, I come from the also yoga tradition and uh, there's so many different techniques and programs and you know yeah. each each uh, let's say master guru teacher has has uh, created their way of yes. reaching that state and right. sometimes i think uh, for people that are new that are just exploring it can become overwhelming because there's yeah. so many techniques out there and and uh, one tradition says okay this is the way to go and then one and 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 then i just stopped and i i thought but okay so and 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 then i mean there's other stuff that you can uh, that you can do to to reach that level there's so much that you do you can work with your body but in the end it it is only you that can know the exact way for yourself to reach it and sometimes you need tools but also i'm i'm thinking do we do we re like in our essence we have it yeah. And okay, we are programmed away from it and we need to deprogram. That's one thing. But after yeah. a while, when you're just in it, you just flow in and out of it. It's not, it's not, it's exactly the opposite of making an effort. It's like effortless. Yeah. Yes. And maybe it's hard to, to get there when we let everything around us to, like fall onto us. But it's, mm. it's really about just being aware and conscious. And then just, if we don't, if we don't take the time to explore it within ourselves of course we can't reach it so we can we can practice yoga and meditation for for decades and not reach any type yeah. of of sensation because we've been relying so much on something outside of us still yeah. so yeah for it's sure. beautiful that you've been uh, doing this and also i mean yeah some some things that you might have experienced 10 years ago uh, then was not maybe talked about a lot and now mm. things are opening up and yes. awareness is opening up and you as a teacher you've you've uh, touched many lives already so so in a way your work is is healing it's joyful it's it's like you, you spread uh, this vibration to everyone that you meet and that's powerful and everyone that has watch you dance too it's amazing to <laughs> watch you dance it, it is like seeing someone i mean in all traditions uh, dancing and movement has been a way to to transcend and get into that trans state and yeah. and you really you, we, you can see that on you and mm. um i'm also thinking about uh, something that we've talked about about the different chakras and mm. dance like how do you incorporate that? Maybe you can talk about mm, that. Yes. Um, so uh, I have a, a, a dance crew, a collective mm -hmm. called Nefer, Nefer Global Movement. It's with women from all over the world. And everyone is very much um, dedicated and experienced into their dance, their 
dance style and everyone I don't know when we dance and we connect there's always this thing happening you know the blackout moment happens I feel mm. like everyone of, of them or everyone of us in the group have a spiritual connection with our dance whether it's it is articulated or not it always kind of happens And mm. I see it also as a big part of why each and every person have been successful. It's not the only reason, but it's one of the main reasons, I feel. And mm. it's a, a way for people to connect and for, with you, with us, and also a way for us to connect with other people and not just people, <laughs> spirits and places mm. and times and memories and ancestors and many things, you know. And this mm. happens without us really um, talking about it or saying like, now we're going to get into this or now we're going to do that. We, we just open up and we go. And everyone mm. plays different parts in that. You, know, you have someone who's the activator, someone who mm. is the grounded one who grounds everyone, someone who's um, maybe more spiritually, um, verbally spiritual, And connects mm. in that way. So everyone plays their part uh, to make that happen within the group. And mm. now, recently, we had a performance in Paris. And we decided oh. to focus on um, the chakras and let that be mm. the structure and the base and the inspiration of the whole piece. So we... We let everyone um, align and connect with the chakra each that we felt, mm -hmm. okay, this seems more like you. This seems more like you. And uh, it it was more, not necessarily the chakra that we, I, I think it was the chakra that we needed, but also the one where we felt at home in, you know, felt mostly mm. connected to. Yeah. And then to develop that in our own, personal ways we uh that's yeah oh no yeah. that's I, i it's just so inspirational because i'm thinking we have like uh, chakra yoga and, and chakra meditations and sure. like chakra dance that that's i mean we we work with the chakras anyways when we're dancing right when when i was yeah. dancing with you like the the caribbean style or the african style it's like you go you ground deep down right so you're working a lot with with the the uh, root chakra and also the sacral chakra and then yeah. you have other types that work more upwards and yeah. and uh, i think it's amazing to tie in even if we don't believe in the systems uh, i mean mm. people everyone who dances feel joy from it right i don't think Uh, I don't know if there are any dances where you don't feel like you're just the energy is just flowing, but it's mm. it's really amazing. And I can when you have that intention also, like when you're dancing and you have that intention, it's so much more powerful. True, true. Oh. And I feel like we we touched on the on the the surface of this because I feel like it can go so deep, and I think it can be used in different ways. You know, like as a healing method, I think it can mm. be used as a way mm. of um, understanding and discovering yourself, the different sides mm. of yourself. Because whether or not you're connected with a chakra system, whether or not this is something that you are, you know, familiar with or comfortable with, it all represents different sides of us, you know, mm. different parts of our life. And this i think can be useful for anyone and everyone <laughs> mm, yeah i'm thinking about even like how we use yoga uh, like therapeutic yoga yeah uh, why not because there's in sometimes when we're feeling or experiencing something in our body it's like energy is not moving It's stuck. Right. It's stagnant. Yeah. And through yoga, for example, and through breathing and, and all of that, we can start moving that energy around. And yeah. dance is the same because, again, there must be an intention. And 
just using yoga in a therapeutic way, in a releasing way. I mean, there are meditations that are more moving meditations, dancing mm. meditations. Mm. It has a purpose. So sometimes maybe we also have to check out these, even if we have a yoga practice and meditation and all of that, or just uh, nature walks. I mean, it, sometimes we need to shake and we need to like yeah. stomp our feet and we need to like... Yeah. really move that energy and I think that's also powerful like I, I think I'm missing a little bit of that uh, here in Stockholm mm. like how we merge these together because yeah yeah we, we we're not tied to any specific traditions we, we are in a time where we can merge things together and think in new ways and how to incorporate that but I think it's also like a lot of co-creation and and uh, the right uh, synchronistic things has to happen to to for this to evolve Mm -hmm. and I think it's beautiful that you because uh, how how many are you in your crew we are 13 wow (laughs) but when we made this piece we were six Okay. Yeah. And that's beautiful. So th- that's what, what I meant. You're like co-creating together yeah. this yeah. type of energy and, and uh, flowing together and you're yeah. uh, together in the exact right time as yeah. well. <gasps> yeah. 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 And, and also, yeah. Yeah. It really, um, with all of that, that you just said, like this about timing and the right time. And when mm-hmm. you're allowed to, believe in that or allow that to actually be part of your guidance or your decisions like feeling where okay where is the energy right now right now i'm feeling like this use and the timing of things and things can really turn out in a very powerful or magical way i believe Mm. and with yeah just trusting in that yeah yeah and just seeing what happened with the girls who were part of this piece and Mm. we had didn't have the best of circumstances to create it and also everybody living in different countries you know mm. being not like not having a lot of time to actually physically meet and do things together um mm. people coming in and out of joining the piece now coming to the piece like all of this um mm. it, it was very challenging to create it but to have this as the core to have the chakras as the core made everything i don't know smoother it made it easier to trust you know Mm. to trust that things would align that things would Mm. everything was happening for a reason and to see the transformation of us as a group but also us as individuals just Mm. like before we started to rehearse and so after we have performed it was really uh, a big transformation actually and i was very Mm. happy to see that it was more than i I expected and that was maybe one of the the most beautiful gifts you know with this whole thing to Mm. be part of that transformation Mm. rather than to just like perform and give a do a good show you know Mm. of course yeah something we always want to do but not Mm. not it's not the main reason you know it's everything that happens behind the scenes how is the process Mm. what happens during that because you spend more time doing that than more time you actually spend on on stage, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's really powerful. And I, when I th- think about you, I also think about the divine feminine and also female empowerment and uh, sisterhood. Because I see that you are mm. a very strong team in that as well. And mm. have you done worked with that consciously as well? Mm. You, maybe you can yeah. share. Yeah, for sure. For me, that has always been a thing, you know, feminine Mm. energy, feminine power and what that is. I mean, growing Mm. up in a patriarchal society, you Mm. you have to learn for yourself what that is and Mm. what it is for you. you And me, I've always had a thing for that. You know, there's always there's always been something going on with that since Mm. I was a a kid and with the girls with this crew we um 
that's one of the reasons why we came together because mm. the dance community as the world is very male dominant even though dance is something very feminine and mm -hmm. if you look at a dance class for example you have a lot of women there a lot of women usually the majority is women mm -hmm. but then when you look at people in power positions in the dance community you'll find more men which mm -hmm. doesn't really make sense so me and all of these girls on our own journeys we are usually like the only girl in the room or the only female teacher at a dance camp or whatever and we were just kind of tired of always being that always having to either challenge or conform to the male um, ways of doing things or we were just tired of that and we needed to we needed a space that was for us we needed a space to just come let's howl at the moon you know come let's talk mm. about crystals come let's do this come let's do a show with chakras come let's you know mm -hmm. we really really craved that space so when we created it um it was such a relief for all of us to just be part of that and to see other women like not even living on the same continent but still going through the same things still having the same experiences we could empower each other in a way that was so needed so needed <laughs> so beautiful and so powerful mm -hmm. we could learn from each other we don't always have to be the one carrying everything and everyone as we do most of us in our own communities you know we, mm. we could be together <laughs> yeah. and as we see well, like also in the dance community how that was needed as well um, for the people around us um, in the sense of having role models um, a lot of men in power positions starting to get nervous around us and it was we would shake things up just by being present you know not really needing to mm -hmm. say or do much but just by being present and standing in our own power and then having a bunch of women doing that together at the same time it's 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 more powerful than um than i expected actually mm. yeah wow yeah that's such important work and uh, yeah just bringing out that yeah like just the 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 feminine essence and uh, as I wrote yesterday in the uh, when we had the international women's day mm -hmm. which should be every day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah just uh, that's remembering her yeah. like yeah. Uh, like the creation of all mm -hmm. like creator of life of, of the universe mm -hmm. and um yeah now it's majorly shifting now it's shifting yeah. in a way that it's not uh at least here and in in the, uh, i hopefully in in many countries that it's it's not taboo to talk about it yeah. but it's it's still it, it there is resistance sometimes oh, we yeah. see resistance uh, both in males and females oh, yeah. actually oh, yeah. Uh, because there is, I mean, we carry, first of all, uh, we, we, we're carrying the pain of uh, the, all the foremothers mm. and the life mothers, mm. or, uh, the wombs that has come before yeah. us, we can, like in all time. And then many of us are also having, since, since we have, past lives uh, in both as female and male mm -hmm. but that we have past lives where we didn't have the choice to express uh, our our wisdom yeah. and uh, we like that suppression yes. and also a prosecution yes. and, and execution yes. um, so that's really strong and I think for many years there's been I think in many of our lives, it has been uh, to to heal that grief yeah. and wound, yeah. not knowing really where it comes yeah. from until we we really dig deep into into uh, going back into yeah. and and daring, and um, and I think that there can be resistance because 
uh, there is still pain within all, in, within the collective. It's not just in in a woman or in so, in a person that has a womb mm. or not a womb. It it doesn't matter. Mm. So that's why it's very strong now. Like now, uh, it's the the it has to everything has to come out. Now we have to be extreme to to balance it out. It has to be. Uh, and and it, actually it's not that extreme it's just the basic yeah. like why why is why has uh, for example uh, priests and gurus it's oh, it for so like i mean the past 20 uh, the past 2000 years been so focused on the male channeling when actually the the women has have always been doing that because this is one thing that I've also noticed and that I've also heard that a man has said, actually, yeah. that in his practice of like 50 years, he still can't feel that he can reach that which women can reach very tap into very easily. And we do that because we have we are cyclical with nature and we have these. I mean, from week to week, our body differs and our our hormones differ. And I, I mean, the last lunation, now we have a full moon yeah. today, but the new moon, and then this new moon in, in the new moon in Pisces, mm. it, it was like, like how you said, I was flowing in a different state. Mm. Like I was not, I was definitely not grounding mm. here in mm. earth. <laughs> and, and that just comes, that's what I mean that we maybe sometimes we, it's not so much effort to get into that. Yeah. We just have to be aware and yeah. to allow ourselves to, to go into that yeah. without doing yeah. so much. And that came also uh, from like where I was in my cycle and all of yeah. that. It, it does it it shifts us like your awareness and consciousness shifts and you go into a state uh, as we're bleeding we are in a state of highest sensitivity mm. and if we're not balanced of course we will feel discomfort in our body when we're balanced we can actually channel a lot mm. and and tap into something mm. really divine yeah. at that point yeah, sure. and and that that's just in this reincarnation yeah. i mean we all have to experience the yin and yang in 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 reincarnation yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for so, sure for sure yeah and just like a question for you like now mm -hmm. uh, with this feminine energy being here being powerful in a new way and taking charge and being very unapologetic in a way you know just like this is just what it mm -hmm. is we're here you know like mm -hmm. it or not you know do whatever you need to do <laughs> to get with the program we're here, you know, yeah. there's a, there's a lot of mm. this energy. Um, some people feel like also the, the masculine energy that is not getting with the program that is not ready to accept and also embrace its own divin uh, divinity, its own femininity, um, will mm. fight this even more, you know, now mm. and that, yeah. With this presence being here and being strong and grounded, um, that there will also be a lot, um, I don't want to say more, but yeah, more in the sense of uh, uh, not in people, but in volume, uh, in uh, challenges mm -hmm. or people coming mm -hmm. up against, energy coming up against, wanting to fight this femininity, masculine mm -hmm. fear for example do you mm. do you see it like that or do you see a different flow happening now um yeah i was i was at a at a yoga weekend thing a, a couple of weeks ago and this came mm. up from a, a, a older man that that said uh, that he is insecure in how he can act mm with all of this like the me too movement yeah. like he feels that he is being hit by this <laughs> and and then another person <laughs> said the same and then i was like like it, i there's no way i can feel bad yeah. for you like we are doing something now to equalize we're not doing something to make uh, 
other, the, the other gender feel uncomfortable. It's just be very mindful. And at the same time, I understand that they don't understand what we went through. They haven't. How have we felt? How have we felt for over 30 years living uh, as a female? We, we, we have been scared of being out like alone late in the evening. Uh, like I'm still very like mindful of that we have to be mindful because we like we that is that is how reality has been we have been the ones that have been like objectified I mean I'm just thinking about how it was when I was uh, like in high school and earlier than that like it was normal for guys to to like say and do whatever they want uh, and and not not even consider what the girl uh, is like how how does it make the girl feel and um and that's that's really what's happening now and i can understand that the uh, the older generations uh, like they can't really get into mm. that and when we are feeling if we feel uncomfortable with something that is actually very mm. fair then we have something that we have to uh heal within ourselves mm. so I, I see that peop- there are men that get uh, uh, pro- uh, provoc- yeah, provoked, uh, like pro- provoked mm. by this, very mm. provoked. And for me, it's just like when there is a force, there there will be a counter force until it reaches balance. It's like yin mm. and yang. You know, in Chinese medicine, we say that we we're constantly like moving in between that light and darkness uh, which both is good right it's the yang and the yin and the masculine and the feminine and um, right now there's a counterpart but i mean in that discussion i always also wanted to add to what he said that actually what is happening now it it's not even like we're not even identifying how it is for women in other countries that are not in the Western countries that don't have the same rights. Like, how can we change that? Of course, this would be a long Mm. progress uh, to move back to where we were before as, as a collective, because this is not how it's always been. And um, to, to honor, uh, to honor what has given you life, you have been, nurtured by the womb you have been nurtured by the breast you have been nurtured by the mother and you will always be nurtured by the mother the divine mother as well and to honor that it's it takes deep healing for all of us and we need to he uh, what the work we're doing now as women to heal ourselves first to not pass this down to the upcoming generations it, that's that's the healing because we can't do this by fighting we have to go within and heal and then hopefully when we're in that flow like the collective in large will do that but it it will take mm-hmm. time yeah it will it will take time but it's it's uh, it's moving towards the right direction i think just remembering her the goddess and remembering that there will always be a balance there was there will always be the mask the divine masculine and divine feminine and uh, re-remembering that and taking back this this right. remembrance yes thank you thank you i'm, I'm making notes here <laughs> i'm like yes oh yes that was a power line right there that makes sense yes <laughs> Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, this is this is really a, a, a very important yeah. topic for me, and and I've also decided to dedicate like my work and my my life into working with females, with health mm-hmm. and with well being, and and that's where my focus yeah. is. So it's a really interesting yes, topic. For sure, for sure. Oh, and it's needed. And I know that also you've been. I mean, you have been traveling all over the world, and um it would be interesting to hear like has there been play one place or many places that have really inspired you and also helped you tap any tradition that has helped you tap into your spirituality any experience oh, yes. for sure mm. well 
<laughs> I want to say every time I set my foot on the continent of Africa, something happens, you know, regardless mm. if I'm in the north and the south and the east and the west, something happens. It's, you know, regardless what I'm doing there, it's always a cleansing and a very grounding experience for me. That continent, just setting foot there, changes vibrations, you know, in the body. And mm. then on top of that, you have lifestyles and cultures and people that will be very inspirational in, in different ways. But to me, there's it's just an energy there that is, I don't know, it just feels ancient and like a mother it feels like a mother <laughs> it feels mm. like a mother yeah it, it is, is the mother, the mother. <laughs> so that is just so mm. no i see myself residing somewhere in africa in a few years of now from mm. now because mm. i don't know to me africa is the answer to so many questions um mm. But also, mm. I'm very interested in the African diaspora. I, I've been mm. to Cuba many times and studied mm. dance and art there. And it has changed my life, I feel. You know, coming back mm. to this, having blackout moments, not really knowing what that is and what is that. In Cuba, that's a normal everyday thing, you know, that's part of, mm. of the culture like Santeria that they practice there and and they evoke those moments they create and support those moments give space for those moments to happen and also go way deeper into them than what I've done before so going there being there exchanging mm. and learning from people there have really um, opened me up for for that and it's just nice to feel like it's normal somewhere to do something that feels very natural. You know? Not mm. here mm. in Sweden where people are just like, what are you talking about? Is this exorcism? And they start to think about the movie. The exorcism. <laughs> like, you know, it's just so weird yeah. associations <laughs> that comes with it over here. So that has been mm. very, um, very inspirational and calming in a way for me. The way Santeria mm. connects with the spirit world, it's also very natural. It's not just, do you believe in ghosts or not? You know, it's not that conversation. It's a different connection, which which uh, helped me like normalize or maybe accept and embrace those connections that I would have, those spiritual connect connections that I would have. Um, so that has been really, really powerful. Brazil, mm -hmm. same thing. They have Umbanda. Mm -hmm. It's a similar thing like Santeria, Candomblé, but um, in, mm -hmm. in Brazil. So you have West African traditions that have traveled throughout the world and uh, developed in different places. And all of that inspires me a lot in um uh, Uruguay as well, the Afro-Uruguayan community and culture, same thing. You have the West African uh, traditions that has mm. been growing in, uh, in Cuba uh, or in uh, Uruguay. Same in Peru, you know? mm. same in so many places. Mm. And also like my main focus is hip hop and has been for since I was mm. a kid. And that also comes from, you know, African traditions that has been um, traveling throughout the world, going through many different things, different experiences, but it stems back, <clears throat> it stems back to Africa when it comes to hip hop. So mm -hmm. I think I relate mm -hmm. to that a lot because I, I'm, a, I'm an African person born in Ethiopia, but grown up in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So I am the diaspora, if that makes sense. I know mm. Mm. like that my experience is that, you know, having Africans, African roots, but not living there, not being part of that lifestyle, community, culture even. So mm. me, I'm also adopted 
So my family doesn't have the, the cultures of where I'm, where I'm from, where I'm born. We have bits and pieces, but mm. it's bits and pieces. So for me to identify myself or to understand more of who I am, dance has really, really helped me to do that. And I think I've been needing hip hop first, because that was my first love, um, to really embrace more of who I am. Sides would come out mm. <clears throat> of me when I would dance or just listen to hip hop that wouldn't come out in my normal life. You know, that it's always been very spiritual without me even noticing it or knowing it. But it has been really, really important for me to embrace myself. I needed a space where where black culture was expressed and um, active and everything that comes with that. Moving, I don't know, sometimes I love freestyling and sometimes I'm dancing and I'm just improvising. I'm doing things that just comes naturally. And then later on, I realize, oh, but wait, this is a dance from this tribe in Ethiopia. Hmm. I haven't even seen that before. Hmm. Interesting, you know, hmm. things like that would always hmm. happen to me. So the dance would always teach me things and it would help me to remember more parts of who I am, but also ancestors and heritage that Sweden mm. couldn't teach me. Sweden just taught me like Africa had slaves and slaves was shipped across the ocean. <laughs> then they picked cotton, sold mm. it to Europe, and then Europe, you know, went back to Africa. Like they would teach me that. Mm. So dance has really, really, really been a, a valuable super important part of my life yeah and for most people it's like entertainment it's something you do for fun but that's just the the surface mm. of it all you know yeah mm. yeah mm. wow that sounds so amazing i'm super happy that you you're sharing your light and yeah you're you're definitely the the roots are in our body so we can tap into everything there we can tap into our ancestry we can tap into uh, past lives everything is in mm. in here so it's so beautiful that and so inspirational i'm so mm -hmm. uh yeah it's amazing that we've connected and synchronistically like connected yes, like this who would have known, known. <laughs> that's so funny because yeah. i've been following your account and just like shared it yeah. with so many people for <laughs> for so many years now i'm like so <laughs> listen and i send you know your posts that you post your daily things i've been sending it to people and i remember at some point mm. i was like wait i feel like this girl is swedish because you, you posted something <laughs> you know, about someone doing something in Sweden. I think it was a workshop or something like that. And, mm. and also when I've been commenting sometimes on your post, you've been answering. I'm like, oh my God, love positivism is replying to me. <laughs> oh my God, you know, out of all the thousands of followers and comments. And, <sighs> and then after a while you were like, mm. we started to write and you were telling me like, hey, writing me in Swedish. Like, mm. hey, do you remember we danced together? I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> and I was so happy, so happy for you. So happy uh, to see that you do what you do. I'm been inspired and inspired, but it's been years now. I'm still inspired. And I'm also happy to see mm -hmm. how you are um, developing what you're doing also, you know, step by step, year by year. Oh. And it's really important. I feel that like it's really important, not just the work that you do, but that you do what you do. <laughs> If that makes sense. Mm, thank you. Yeah, that's so Aww. sweet of you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it means a lot. And you were definitely a true inspiration for me as well. And, and uh, for mm. so many. And yeah, I would, I would just like you to uh, if share if you have anything special going on that you would maybe people can mm. check out or well, any um... shows. Something that is always around is there's a documentary uh, about me and Marta, mm. which is a woman that I, I was dancing with. Yes. I would say very 
very spiritually connected as well um this documentary mm. if yeah, it depends on where you are in the world but i know it's up on uh, svt.se <laughs> That's the Swedish TV channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's being screened all over the world, sometimes on television, sometimes in cinemas. So you can keep your eyes open for the uh, Martha and Nikki documentary. Um, mm -hmm. My next thing that I'm developing at the time is actually a more of a healing type of uh, dance healing type of dance expression mm. and to have gatherings with people who want to come and dance and focus on the healing side of it even a bit more um so that is coming mm. up keep your eyes i think on my instagram for the yes info of when and where mm. my my yes, yes i need to I join that to <laughs> for that sure <laughs> Wow. So, yes. Yes. Nikki yes. Abondi on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, you have Nefer mm. Global Movement. That is the crew. And mm. also, if you live here in Stockholm, yeah. I have, a, or in Sweden, I have a crew called Cypher 64, which is here. We are here. Uh, we have classes every Sunday mm. at six o'clock rock. Mm. So you can also check mm. all the information is on Instagram um, and Facebook. Yes, I will share the links for everything okay. in, in the show awesome. notes here so everyone can check you awesome. out and Facebook as well. Oh, yes. I thank you so much, Nikki. It was so lovely. Yes. The time went so fast. <laughs> I could talk to you much more, but I'm sure we will connect again. I would love for you to come back and share uh, other stuff on your journey yeah. and... Yeah, I'm sending you Thank so much you. love Thank and blessings. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for creating this podcast. Uh, I'm very blessed and honored to be part of it. Thank you so much. Mm. And uh, I look forward to connect again. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. I hope this conversation can help you on your journey and maybe find ways to use dance as a healing or as a way to connect with yourself on a deeper level and with the divine. So if you want to get in touch with Nikki, you can find all the links in the show notes for this episode. And uh, yeah, check her out, her classes, her documentary, and all the work that she's doing with her dance crews. And I really appreciate all the feedback and reviews that you have. It really helps me spread the, the messages to more people and to make the podcast more findable for everyone. So if you have the time, take just a second to leave a review on iTunes or repost it on Instagram. And I'll always do an oracle card reading for you. So let's take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Namaste.